In today's installment of the web development for our series, we are going to talk about CSS selection. You see, building out a whole website with HTML and CSS like we did last time is usually not what you do in the real world. Instead, you already get a bunch of HTML and CSS code and you have to figure out how to drill into specific parts of that and modify the style of the things that you want to change. And that's exactly where CSS selection comes in. It helps you to drill down into the part that you want to change and insert CSS instructions right there where it's needed. And that way you modify the page that you already got. And that's what we're going to do today. So let's dive in. Now, before I give a dry lecture about CSS selection, I thought I'd actually show you a fun game that teaches you exactly what you need to know. This game is called CSS Diner. It shows you on the top a table with a couple of elements like plates, fruits or whatever on it. And in the bottom, you see the HTML viewer that corresponds to these things. You see, you have some fictitious tags here, like, well, the div containers actually wanted to exist in the real world, but then you have something like plate. And you also see here the shorthand notation for a tag that doesn't use an opening and closing tag, but just one that doesn't have any content inside. And that's why you uses just this shorthand notation for open and close text. Anyway, you see at the bottom the code and at the top above the table, you see an instruction that tells you select the plates. And then you have to look at the code and type in here in the CSS editor, the CSS code that selects the desired part. In this case, we need to select by type. You see these tags are plate tags and we need to select them using the tag. So that's why the CSS selector is just plate. And if you press enter, then you actually select the right one and the next level shows up. I'm not actually going to play this whole game with you, but I'm going to show you a couple of levels to teach you all of the things that you need. And then we can go into R and then I'll give you an example where you can use the techniques that you learn in this game. So here it tells us that we need to select the bento boxes. Again, we see here there are bento tags and plate tags and here we want to grab the bento boxes. So we put in bento. Cool, that was easy. It was basically the same thing. Now we want to select the fancy plate. Let's have a look at the code and we see here, ah, there are two plates and one of them is fancy. And by fancy, it means it has the ID, which is set to fancy. By the way, I'm giving you the explanations here of what the CSS selection code means. But if you play this on your own, on the right hand side, you actually get a description of what, what you need to put in there. But in any case, back to the game, we want to grab all plates that have ID fancy. So that's why we use plate and then we use the ID symbol, which is the hashtag, and then we put in fancy and that selected the correct one and we move on to the next level. Okay, now we want to select the apple on the plate. This means that we need to get descendants. You see in the code here, you see that there is a plate and inside there's the apple and we want to get this apple and not any apple. You see, if we would just put an apple, you see how all Apple waves, it actually shows you what you'd select if you put in something in there. But we want to get only the Apple that is on the plate. So this is why we have to use the plate and the white space in front of that. And this means find the plate and then in there find the Apple. So that's how you can access nested structures. Now in this level, we can actually combine the two concepts we have learned before. We want to get the pickle, the one here that is on the fancy plate. So here we see we have a plate that has the ID fancy and in there is the pickle that we want. We don't want the pickle that is on the regular plate, but the pickle that is on the fancy plate. So here we first have to select the correct plate, namely the plate with the ID. That's why we use the hashtag with the ID fancy. And then we use a white space and we put in pickle and that did the right thing. All right. Next, we want to select small apples. We look at the code and we see here that there are different apples, okay, but only the small ones have the class small. So this means just like with the ID, we have to use the tag that we want, in this case, the apple. And instead of the symbol for ID, we use the symbol for class, which is a dot. And then we use the class name, which in this case is small. And now we get the correct one. Cool. We are almost done. We're going to play until level 10 or 11, and then we move into R. I hope you don't get impatient. But bear with me, we are actually learning exactly what we need for the R stuff. On this level, it's the exact same thing, only that we want to use oranges instead of apples. So we use the orange tag and then we use dot for class and then small for the class name. Now we combine a couple of things again. Select the small oranges in the bentos. Okay, so we see here we want to 
get stuff that is nested into a bento tag and in there we want to get the orange that is of class small nice that worked now let's figure out the next one there we are supposed to select all plates and bentos now with css you can just list the things that you want to grab we want to have plates and we want to have bento but since we already know this one would look for descendants we actually have to put something in between and this means we have to use a comma here and with that we grab everything that we have put into that list finally let us use the universal selector which selects everything and that is the star so let's use that and with that we have grabbed everything nice so it's actually a bit of fun to play this game but we have learned everything we needed so if we want to get to the levels further down the line you have to play this game yourself i strongly recommend this because you learn a lot of tricks that you can use in the real world but for now let's apply what we've learned so far in r in my quarter file i've already put in a code chunk that loads the tidyverse and the gt package so that we can create a small table using the towny data set from the gt package we grab two columns five rows and then we send that to gt to get a table that looks like the one we see here on the right now there are ways built into gt to select specific cells of the table and then style them any way you want but not every functionality that css can do is actually implemented in the gt interface and just in case you haven't realized this gt is actually nothing but html and css if you open this on your web browser you can actually inspect this and you see that this is just a table with a whole bunch of weird tags that you may know or may not know it doesn't matter but the point is all of this is css and every cell also has html and css tags i do believe i've just said all of this is css that's wrong all of this is html and css whatever you get the point all of this is the fancy web development stuff that we want to learn here and inside of r you can actually access all of the code that you want to look at you could pass your table to the as raw html function and in there you could say that the inline css is set to false and now this would put all of the html and css code into your console you see here is basically the table and above that come all of the style instructions for the table and this is exactly what this inline css set to false does if i just not do that by default all of the styles will be immediately put into the respective html tags and this is quite messy so this is why i have set inline css to false and also this gives us the option to modify the style instructions that we see here oh and this reminds me don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video because this helps me to create better and more videos because i will feel good about myself and you know that this is the key to productivity feeling good about yourself in any case thank you for hitting the like button and now let's get back to the video so now let's actually add some css code to our gt table so let's take our gt table and pass this to the opt css function and there you can just use the css argument and then as a text put in the css that you want to use and in there you could use css selection to target specific cells of your table and then use some style instructions to style these cells differently so let's scroll down here and then let's have a look at how we could do something really simple like making the text color of the column labels red okay so if we look at our table we want to make this part here use red text color so my initial guess would be since all of the column labels are inside this tr tags of the class gt call headings we could use the css selection for that to make the text red so let's copy this class name and then let's say the tr tags of the class gt call headings then we use these brackets here to put style instructions in there and here we could say okay color is supposed to be red let's try this and this sadly didn't work now if you paid attention just a couple of seconds ago you might have realized that all of the instructions that you've seen here they are prefixed by the id test table and that's exactly the id of the table that we specified here and this means that if we want to override any of those instructions here like the one for the gt call headings maybe we can find them up here somewhere i have to scroll a bit but i do think i can find a gt group heading 
GT call heading there. So if we want to override any of these instructions here, we also have to use the ID label. So, okay, let's copy this part here and say in anything that has the ID test table, find the TR tags of the class GT call headings. You see, that's exactly what we just learned in the game. You chain things by putting everything into a list using only white space. Okay, so let's try this now. And now it still didn't work, which is a bit of a shame. But if we look at the code, we might get another idea of what's going on. You see, all of our column names are nested inside of these th tags of a specific class. So maybe these specific tags of that specific class also have some style instructions that we have to override. But at this point, it's really annoying to have like a guessing game. And that's exactly where our powerful helper friend, the web inspector, comes into play. You see, just like we've learned in a couple of videos before, you just open up this thing, you can make this larger, and then you inspect this thing. And now if you inspect what we have inside of the column, then you will get redirected to the correct part inside of the code. And there you see that the most specific CSS instruction that determines the color is at the top here. That's where the color is set. So if we set this to red, we can see how our labels inside of the column become red. So this is definitely the CSS selection that we need to change. So let's just copy this into our function and then use that. And just in case you haven't noticed, the difference here is really subtle. We don't actually have to specify the TR tags here and also the class name that we have to use in the end that we have seen in our web inspector isn't call headings, but call heading like in singular. So we put this part in here and now we get nice red color. Once again, this kind of functionality is integrated into GT. You don't actually have to use HTML and CSS. You could just use the inbuilt R functions from GT to do that. But this part here gives you the flexibility to use stuff from CSS that isn't implemented inside of GT. For example, you could use a linear gradient as a background. Let's just do a linear gradient of 45 degree angle between the colors red and blue. It will be really ugly. I can tell you that already, but the point isn't that it's beautiful. The point is that you can do it. And if you execute this, you get a, well, I would lie if I'd say it's a nice linear gradient, but you get a linear gradient. And you could choose colors so that this looks nice and you could make it so that the gradient doesn't repeat with every cell but it's one common gradient for the whole thing but that's a different story the point remains you can do all of the things that css gives you which is usually more than what gt can give you okay but still let's remove this part here and let's just do one more example of css selection something we haven't learned in the levels we have played so this is a kind of motivation for you to play the remaining levels from the CSS diner so that you can do the more complex stuff too. So what we could do is to first use the ID test table again, and then we could modify something inside of the body of the table. So let's use the T body tags of the class GT table body. These are the things that I got from here, from the code. You see that there's a T body tag and that's the class GT table body. And in there you can see that you get multiple rows indicated by TR tags. And inside of these TR tags are TD tags. This one is the first one and this one is the second one. And these correspond exactly to the two columns that we have inside of our table. So the TR tag is really the rows and the TD tag is the columns. So what if we wanted to style the cell in the third row of the second column differently? Well, then we could use the CSS selection, which targets the TR tag and uses the nth child thingy. I don't know what the actual CSS term is. I don't think it is. I think it's an attribute or an add-on or whatever. In any case, you just use this nth child thing and say you want the third child. So this will immediately give you the third child TR, the third TR child of the T body that you've selected. So you immediately end that tag. And then by the same logic, you want to get the second TD child. And now you can specify some instructions like color, font, weight, and background. And that way you have specified the style for this specific cell of the table. Cool. So I hope this was a motivation for you to try out the different levels from the CSS liner. And also I hope this shows you how useful it can be to use CSS selection. 
And when we get to the R package Shiny to create web apps, this would be really powerful because Shiny gives you already so much code. And if you want to style something, you will really have to drill down into the existing code and use CSS selections to modify different parts. But that's a story for some other time. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And you may also enjoy the other videos from our web development for R playlist. Or you might enjoy this playlist here where I show you how to make complex charts with ggplot. So thank you for watching and I will see you next time.